Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install this claw foot tub and shower unit. This is a new customer. Uh, I was referred to her and uh, this was the third floor of a big one family house. Uh, and it was a high third floor. Let me tell you, I must have went in and out of this house a hundred times. Anyway, uh, if you're considering doing a job like this, uh, you may want to rethink that. Uh, very tedious. Uh, very time consuming, and if you're not uh, a true DIYer, you may get frustrated and find that you're going to throw this thing out the window. Anyway, uh, check out the video, and I will see you on the other side of this intro. So, we're going to go back a little bit in time and uh, we'll take a look at some vintage uh, plumbing here. Uh, actually, it's partially contemporary, partially vintage. You got the old pedestal sink here with the uh, antique brass faucet. But you'll see underneath they have some chrome stuff there. You have a actually a, a tamper-proof shutoff valve that's supplying water to a porcelain tank that's hanging up uh, there on the wall above the toilet. And you can see somebody silicone the, the uh, flush downpipe there. But that's hanging on the wall. You got a chain connected to the handle, and that's a functional uh, bowl. And the reason I'm at this job is because we're going to change that uh, claw, claw foot uh, shower unit. And, uh, you know, it hasn't been working. It's been giving the homeowner a lot of trouble. So they decided they want a new one. I guided them on where to, to find fixtures like this. They went out and bought the product. And, you know, they paid me to do the installation. But, you know, it's it's a third floor. It's a big one family house. It's the third floor. It's like the it's in the I guess you would consider this the attic, the bathroom in the attic that her son uses. But anyway, the task at hand is to break everything down and then put the new one in. And you'll see here from behind. This is the way they did it. They kind of retrofitted things here. You have gooseneck connections with traditional speedy connectors and fortunately i thought you know we have valves here i don't have to shut the house off but unfortunately those valves did not hold water so i had to go down the basement and shut the water off in order for me to install new valves and you can see that's an actual trip waste there so it leads me to believe that this was a more of a, a modern install because you know vintage tubs like this usually don't have a trip waste assembly connected to them but at any rate um, I shut the water off and uh, before I actually proceeded to change in the valves, I noticed there was a stain on the floor and you could see there was a leak there. I told the homeowner, I said, let me uh, get the new valves on. And then what I'll do is I'll take the old unit out and then I'll, I'll see if I can address the strainer. If it comes out easily, not a problem. If it's going to be an issue getting the strainer out, we'll have to come revisit that. And here we go. I have the water off. And now I'm going to put new valves on, uh, both hot and cold water. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, sometimes these things hold, but sometimes these valves are left on there. They're never used. And then when you go to shut them off, they never hold. So what I generally do is I'll use my Blue Monster Teflon tape in a clockwise fashion, followed by my Mega Lock, especially on these old connections. But that's copper tubing coming out of the wall. So this is kind of a semi modern uh, setup. I don't know when this job was done. Uh, this is the first time I've done work for this customer. But at any rate, uh, so it was time to get these new valves on so I could get the water back to them because they were concerned on how long the water was going to be shut off. So after I got the water back on again, uh, what I wanted to do was to proceed to break down the um, break down the actual faucet and get it off there. But I got the water back on here. And now it was time to remove uh, the old unit from the tub, which was a pain in the neck because I had to use a little six inch wrench uh, to try to get those lock nuts off. I had no access from the front like I did in the new fitting. You'll see that coming up. But uh, here it is me uh, kind of loosening up that shower riser. But... Uh, and then it was a process of just taking down the shower rod and backing everything off. And, you know, I ended up with, uh, you know, 
a, a bear a, a bear uh, footprint here. And so what I wanted to do before I proceeded to installing the new faucet, I wanted to uh, deal with this strainer. And like I said, if it was good, if the strainer moved, I'll, I'll see if I could address why this thing leaked. If it didn't move and I couldn't get it to budge, I was going to come back to it later on or, or actually another day. I wanted to proceed with the faucet. And as you can see here, it came out. I would say, I don't want to say it was loose, but it came out. And as you can see, there wasn't much of a sealer there. So I could see why water was seeping down the bottom there. I mean, generally, there should be a, a whole load of plumber's putty in there. And there was not. So I cleaned everything up, as I usually do. And then I uh, prep it with my mega lock. And I actually, you know, put it up the strainer. And I don't usually put Teflon on these male threads. But I said, let me put two rounds of my Blue Monster tape on here, followed by some mega lock, uh, just for little insurance purposes. And uh, I got that started in there. Once I actually got it started and hand tight as much as I could get it, I used a 10 inch wrench and I, I mean, I whacked it up and I got that putty uh, nice and, you know, squeezed out. And then I trimmed it off with the screwdriver, wiped it up and uh, it was looking good. And at that stage, you know, I proceeded to uh, go and actually, uh, start to install the new faucet and you'll see that coming up in a minute here but i i actually got this in here hand tight and what i like to see is when i get that strainer in there you'll see that putty squeezing out and that's what i want to see i want to see that putty squeezing out it's kind of like melding with the mega lock and uh, that's a watertight seal as far as i'm concerned fortunately these new uh faucets came with uh You'll see uh, access for seat wrenches that you could make them up from the front. So all I had to do was hold back the lock nuts. I didn't have to go turning. I should have used my seat wrench, but I was too lazy to go down the stairs three floors. I was in and out of this house 10,000 times. I used my caping chisel and I stuck it into the opening uh, where I normally would put my seat wrench. And I made them up with that tool, if you can believe it or not. And uh, I got them in there and I whacked them up. And as you can see here, I got the faucet installed. And now it was a matter of, uh, you know, going ahead, getting the riser up and then going and constructing the, uh, the shower curtain rod, which was a real PIA. But we'll look under here. I got the goosenecks. I used the original goosenecks and the original risers because they were uh, viable. Uh, those goosenecks, I actually put... Um, Teflon tape on the face of the goosenecks. I used uh, waterproof silicone lubricant on the male threads of the tub faucet so that those nuts would run up. And then I made them up with a six inch wrench, whacked them up, turned the water on, and everything was watertight. I was very happy with it. And uh, here's the finished product. You know, once I got everything in, and it was very time consuming. I would say, all told, you're talking from start to finish uh, about six hours. And I know it sounds like a lot of time, but it was very meticulous. You know, you have to lay everything out. First of all, you have to put that whole shower rod together. It comes, you know, you know it comes in like pieces, left side, right side. There's like 10,000 screws and flanges to hook up to the ceiling. So it's very time consuming. If you've never done one of these before, I would highly recommend hiring a professional or somebody who knows what they're doing because they, they can be frustrating and they can get you really riled up to the point where you will end up ruining things. I don't suggest you do that. So if you're not of the faint at heart, go ahead, take a crack at it. If not, hire a professional. Trust me. You'll thank me. So there you go, guys. It took a good six hours to get this job done. Uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar with the tools and how to approach something like this, I would highly recommend you hire a pro to do this because it can get highly frustrating. But there are a lot of these tubs still out there. These faucets are really not precision-made pieces of equipment. Most of them are imported. So, you know, I don't really put much faith into the longevity of these faucets. But... People like them, they love them, and they want to kind of replicate uh, what went on in years gone by. So uh, you work with what you have. Guys, I'm glad you stopped by to check out the video. I always enjoy you coming by my channel. Again, I know you have choices. I'm honored you hit my channel up. 
Uh, if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post new videos. But the most important thing you can do is like this video, because without liking this video, YouTube throws it in the trash bin. Folks, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Stay well, and as I always like to say, guys, happy plumbing. Yeah.